we are considering piecewise polynomial approximation. Our function f is defined on interval a b, closed and bounded interval a b taking real values. We divide this interval into n equal parts. So, each sub interval is going to have length h which is equal to b minus a divided by n. We fix k to be the degree of the polynomial and then on each interval we are going to fit a polynomial of degree less than or equal to k. We have already considered the case of piecewise linear interpolation. In that case, we had considered the interpolation points to be the partition points. So, there are n plus 1 partition points, we are dividing the interval into n equal parts. So, there are n plus 1 partition points. So, for each interval t i to t i plus 1, we look at the value of the function at t i and value at t i plus 1 and join it by straight line. So, that gives us a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 1. Because we are considering the interpolation points to be the end points of the interval, our function which is a piecewise linear function, it is going to be a continuous function. And last time we saw that the maximum error norm of f minus p n, its maximum norm or infinity norm is less than or equal to constant times h square. h is b minus a by n, b minus a is fixed. So, as n tends to infinity, h square will tend to 0 and the error will tend to 0. So, thus the degree of the polynomial in each sub interval was fixed to be less than or equal to 1 and then we increase the number of intervals and then under the assumption of function to be 2 times continuously differentiable, we have proved the convergence of piecewise linear interpolation. Today, we are going to consider piecewise quadratic interpolation and piecewise cubic interpolation. We will show that in the case of piecewise quadratic interpolation, the maximum error is going to be less than or equal to constant times h cube. So, instead of h square, we get h cube. So, we have got faster convergence and in case of piecewise cubic, we will get the maximum error to be less than or equal to constant times h raise to 4. So, still a faster convergence. Now, let me consider the notations which we are going to use. So, for k bigger than or equal to 1, c k a b is going to consist of functions which are k times continuously differentiable on interval a b. This is going to be a vector space. For a continuous function, we have already defined the maximum norm that is maximum of mod f x, x belonging to a b. Throughout this lecture, we are going to consider the following uniform partition of interval a b, which is a is equal to t 0 less than t 1 less than t n is equal to b. For i is equal to 0 1 up to n minus 1, t i plus 1 minus t i which is equal to h that is going to be equal to b minus a by n. Let us recall the error in the interpolating polynomial. I had told you that this is a very important relation. So, p n is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n. Interpolating the given function at n plus 1 points x 0, x 1, x n, then the 
we have got an expression for the error f x minus p n x and if the function f is n plus 1 times differentiable, then we get the error in terms of the derivative of the function evaluated at some point. The error consists of two parts, it consists of divided difference f of x 0, x 1, x n, x, which if the function is n plus 1 times differentiable, then it is going to be equal to n plus first derivative evaluated at some point c, that point c is going to depend on x. It also depends on x 0, x 1, x n, but x 0, x 1, x n are fixed and x varies over interval a b. So, this is one part and other part is the function w x that is x minus x 0, x minus x 1, x minus x n. Last time we have seen that maximum norm of w is minimized by choosing x 0, x 1, x n to be Chebyshev points. Now, today we are going to replace the in interval a b by interval t i 2 t i plus 1 and in each polynomial in each sub interval we are going to have a polynomial of degree less than or equal to k. So, we are going to join two polynomials together. Let us look at first the case of linear polynomial. So, let p 0 x to be a 0 plus a 1 x, x belongs to 0 to 1. Then let q 0 x to be equal to b 0 plus b 1 x, x belonging to 1 to 2. So, we have interval 0, 1 and 2. If we do not impose any continuity condition at 1, then we have got 4 constants which can vary independently. So, a 0, a 1, b 0, b 1. Suppose we impose continuity that means, we want p 0 at 1 should be equal to q 0 at 1. The problem of continuity comes only at the partition points. Otherwise, in the interval 0 to 1 p 0 being a polynomial, it is infinitely many times differentiable. In the interval 1 to 2, the polynomial q 0 is going to be infinitely many times differentiable. So, the question is whether the values at 1 whether they match. So, that gives us a 0 plus a 1 is equal to b 0 plus b 1. So, that means, now if I fix a 0, a 1 and b 0, then I have no choice for b 1. If I want b 1 to be continuous, I, I, if I want the function which is formed by p 0 and q 0 to be continuous, then b 1 has to satisfy a 0 plus a 1 minus b 0. So, earlier we could vary a 0, a 1, b 0, b 1 independently. Now, we can vary only 3 constants independently a 0, a 1 and b 0 and then b 1 is determined in terms of a 0, a 1 and b 0. Then suppose we want the derivatives to be continuous. So, we want p 0 dash at 1 is equal to q 0 dash at 1, p 0 dash at x is equal to a 1, q 0 dash at x is equal to b 1 and hence we get a 1 to be equal to b 1. 
Now, we have two relations, we have got this relation and we have got this relation. So, from these two relations one concludes that A 0 has to be equal to B 0, A 1 has to be equal to B 1 that means, it is a single polynomial. So, if we look at two polynomials of degree less than or equal to 1, then we can ask the resulting function to be continuous and still retain the piecewise nature, but if we ask the function to be continuous and differentiable, then it becomes the single polynomial. Next, let us look at the case of quadratic polynomials. So, look at p 0 x to be equal to a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square x belonging to 0 to 1 and q 0 x to be equal to b 0 plus b 1 x plus b 2 x square x belonging to 1 to 2. So, we have got 6 constants which can vary independently. Continuity at point 1 implies that a 0 plus a 1 plus a 2 has to be equal to b 0 plus b 1 plus b 2. So, that means, we have got only 5 constants which are independent. Then suppose we want p 0 dash at 1 is equal to q 0 dash at 1. Then we have a 1 plus 2 a 2 should be equal to b 1 plus 2 b 2. So, one more degree of liberty is lost. If we say that p 0 double dash 1 is equal to q 0 double dash 1, then this will imply that 2 a 2 should be equal to 2 b 2. So, thus from here we have got b 2 is equal to a 2, from here we get b 1 to be equal to a 1 and from here we get b 0 to be equal to a 0. So, as in the case of the piecewise linear polynomials, if you say that two quadratic polynomials p 2 and q 2, they should together form a two times continuously differentiable function. In that case, it becomes a single polynomial defined on these two intervals. So, if we want to retain the piecewise structure, then for quadratic polynomial, we can go up to the continuity of the derivative. If we increase the degree of the polynomial, that means, if we consider two cubic polynomials, then we can demand that the resulting function should be two times differentiable and still we can have two different cubic polynomials respectively on the interval 0 to 1 and interval 1 to 2. If for cubic polynomials we ask for the function to be continuous, first derivative, second derivative, third derivative to be continuous, then it will reduce to a single cubic polynomial. So, when we demand the continuity or the continuity of the derivatives, then for each of this demand, the degree of liberty gets reduced by 1. So, now we are going to here we had considered only two polynomials. Now, we are going to consider 
n intervals and on each interval we consider a polynomial. So, first we are going to look at the dimension of such a space and then piecewise linear case we have already considered. So, we will go to piecewise quadratic and piecewise cubic. So, as I said our interval a b is going to be divided into n equal parts and then you consider x n to be set of all f or set of all g defined on interval a b such that restriction of g to interval t i to t i plus 1 is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to k. We have got n intervals in each interval it is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to k that means, we have got k plus 1 coefficients at our disposal. So, total there are going to be n into k plus 1 and that is going to be the dimension of the space x n. If we consider the space y n where once again g restricted to t i to t i plus 1 is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to k, but we impose the function to be continuous. So, we have got this is our interval a b, then we are subdividing into n equal parts. So, this is t 0, t 1, t 2, t n minus 1, t n. Here it is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to k. So, we saw that the total degrees of liberty they are n into k plus 1. Now, we will want these two polynomials to be continuous. So, that will impose one constraint then continuity at t 2 and continuity at t n minus 1. So, we are imposing total n minus 1 constraints. So, it will be minus n minus 1 and thus we get the dimension to be equal to n k plus 1. So, this is if you are assuming continuity. If we want the function its derivative and f double dash to be continuous, then the dimension will be equal to n into k plus 1 minus at each point t 1, t 2, t n minus 1, we are putting two constraints. So, that will be minus 2 into n minus 1. So, that will be the dimension of the space. So, this was general case. Now, let me recall the piecewise linear continuous polynomials. We have got n intervals in each interval linear means we have got two coefficients. So, it is 2 into n at interior nodes the continuity considerations. So, they are n minus 1 t 1 t 2 t n minus 1. So, the dimension of the space is 2 n minus n minus 1. So, that is going to be n plus 1. So, this is going to be dimension of our vector space which consists of piecewise linear continuous functions. If we look at the value of the function f at the partition points that means, t 0, t 1 up to t n. So, these partition points they are n plus 1 in number. So, if we try to determine a piecewise linear continuous function which matches with the given function at t 0, 
t 1 up to t n, then such a function is going to be unique. This part we had seen last time that for linear polynomial interpolation norm of f minus p 1 its infinity norm is less than or equal to norm f double dash infinity divided by 2 into b minus a by 2 square. Our function is going to be linear on each interval t i to t i plus 1. So, this bound we will write for the interval t i to t i plus 1 and the bound will be norm f double dash infinity norm divided by 2 b minus a will be replaced by h by 2 square. So, that will be for maximum of modulus of f x minus g 1 x, where g 1 is our piecewise linear continuous function for x belonging to t i to t i plus 1, but then the bound is going to be independent of i. So, the same bound works for each interval t i to t i plus 1 and we get norm of f minus g n its infinity norm to be less than or equal to norm f double dash infinity divided by 8 h square. So, it is the bound for the linear polynomial we had applied to piecewise linear polynomial on each interval t i 2 t i plus 1. So, thus we have got the error in the piecewise linear continuous functions to be less than or equal to constant times h square, where constant is second derivative nor f double dash its infinity norm divided by h. What we are going to do is consider an example. Look at the function f x is equal to root x, x belonging to closed interval 1 to 2. So, root x on interval 1 to 2 is going to be infinitely many times differentiable. What we want is it should be differentiable twice and then we will look at the second derivative. So, we can find a value of norm f double dash infinity in this special case f x is equal to root x. Then we will look at this upper bound and suppose we want the error to be less than 10 raise to minus 6. Then we will get our error which involves b minus a by n whole square multiplied by some constant to be less than 10 raise to minus 6 and from that we can get the value of n. So, by looking at the upper bound we can beforehand tell what n we should use so as to obtain the desired accuracy. The same example we are also going to consider for the piecewise quadratic polynomial. So, we have f x is equal to root x, x belonging to 1 to 2. We have norm of f minus g n infinity to be less than or equal to norm f double dash infinity divided by 8 into h square, where h is b minus a by n and in this case it is going to be 1 by n. f dash x is going to be 1 upon 2 root x, f double dash x will be equal to minus 1 by 4 x raise to 3 by 2. When you consider mod of f double dash x, this is going to be 1 upon 4 x raise to 3 by 2. So, this is a decreasing function on interval 1 to 2. 
and hence maximum of mod of f double dash x, x belonging to 1 to 2, this will be attained at the left hand point 1 and then you get it to be equal to 1 by 4. So, we have norm of f minus g n infinity norm to be less than or equal to 1 upon 32 and then 1 upon n square because h is equal to 1 by n. Now, this will be less than say 10 raise to minus 6 provided n square is bigger than 10 raise to 6 divided by 32. So, if you choose n is equal to 200 then that will work. So, in fact, any number in to be bigger than 200 will work and this is a rough estimate. So, this was about piecewise linear interpolation. Now, we are going to consider piecewise quadratic. So, first let us look at quadratic polynomials. So, one single quadratic polynomial defined on interval a b. For quadratic polynomial interpolation, we need three points. So, let us choose those three points to be two end points of the interval a b and the midpoint of the interval a b. Because we are choosing the end points and afterwards when we consider the interval a b subdivide into n equal parts and for each sub interval t i to t i plus 1, we will be choosing two end points and the midpoint. So, because the partition points are going to be the interpolation points for piecewise quadratic function, our resulting function is going to be continuous. So, let me first recall that if f is from a b to r, p 2 x is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 such that p 2 at a is equal to f of a p 2 at the midpoint a plus b by 2 is f of a plus b by 2 and p 2 b is equal to f of b. Then f x is going to be equal to f of a plus divided difference based on a a plus b by 2 into x minus a plus divided difference based on a a plus b by 2 b x minus a x minus a plus b by 2. So, this is p 2 x and the error term is going to be f of a a plus b by 2 b x and x minus a x minus a plus b by 2 x minus b. So, let me call this as w x. So, we have f x minus p 2 x is equal to f triple dash at some point c divided by 3 factorial and then w x. So, when we look at the error norm of f minus p 2 infinity norm, this will be less than or equal to norm f triple dash divided by 3 factorial and into norm of w infinity. So, w x is our function x minus a x minus a plus b by 2 x minus b. We can find the infinity norm for this function. We have got a continuous function. 
when we want to find its maximum what we have to do is look at the value at the end points look at the value where the derivative vanishes or derivative does not exist so such points they are known as the critical points so we get hopefully finitely many points two end points and the critical points compare the value of the function at this finitely many points whichever is the maximum that is going to be absolute maximum of the function whichever is the minimum it is absolute minimum you should not go for second derivative test because the second derivative tells you only about the local maximum or local minimum so let us calculate maximum of mod of wx x belonging to ab so for the sake of convenience we will make a change of variable and then we will calculate so we have maximum of modulus of wx x belonging to ab is equal to maximum of mod of x minus a x minus a plus b by 2 x minus b x belonging to a b so let y be equal to x minus a plus b by 2 and k to be equal to b minus a by 2 then when we look at y plus k that will be nothing but x minus a y minus k will be x minus b and hence this maximum it reduces to maximum of mod of y minus a or it is going to be maximum of y plus k y y minus k where y is going to vary over x varies over interval a b so x minus a plus b by 2 that is going to vary over minus k to k since k is b minus a by 2 so we have this is maximum of mod of y cube minus y k square y belonging to minus k to k this function vanishes at the two end points minus k and k now let us look at the critical points so critical point will be given by 3 y square minus k square is equal to 0 this is the derivative value so you get y is equal to plus or minus k by root 3 so these are critical points when you put y is equal to k by root 3 then modulus of y cube minus y k square is going to be k cube by 3 root 3 minus k cube by root 3 so this will be 2 k cube divided by 3 root 3 its modulus and for y is equal to minus k by root 3 you are going to get the same value so the maximum of this is going to be equal to 2 upon 3 root 3 and k cube is b minus a by 2 whole cube so that is for the norm w infinity and then for the error in the quadratic polynomial we have got norm w infinity and then norm 
f triple dash infinity divided by 3 factorial. So, this is our norm of f minus p 2 infinity which is less than or equal to norm f triple dash infinity upon 9 root 3 b minus a by 2 cube. So, this was for a single polynomial. Now, we consider piecewise quadratic. Our we look at uniform partition x n is the vector space of functions which are continuous and which are such that on each sub interval it is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2. So, the dimension of the space x n is going to be n intervals on each interval a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 that means, 3 coefficients. So, it is 3 n and then interior partition points are n minus 1 in number t 1, t 2, t n minus 1. You want continuity. So, subtract n minus 1 and then you get 2 n plus 1. So, now in order to have a unique g n belonging to x n, we need to provide 2 n plus 1 condition. So, consider g n which belongs to x n which interpolates the given function at t i and also at the midpoints of the sub interval. Such a polynomial, such a piecewise polynomial is going to be unique. And now, look at the error. So, the error for single polynomial was norm f triple dash infinity upon 9 root 3 b minus a by 2 cube. Look at the interval t i to t i plus 1. So, replace the interval a b by t i to t i plus 1. Then upper bound is norm f triple dash infinity by 9 root 3 into h by 2 cube. We could have taken maximum for the third derivative only on the interval t i to t i plus 1. Still, it would have provided us an upper bound, but we wanted a upper bound which is independent of i. So, for each interval t i to t i plus 1, we have got the same bound. So, if you take maximum over the whole interval a b, it is going to be the same bound and notice that here the error is less than or equal to constant times h cube. The constant will involve the third derivative of the function and then the constants 9 root 3 and then 8 in the denominator. We look at again the same function f x is equal to root x. For this root x, for piecewise linear continuous approximation, we saw that the in order to have the error to be less than 10 raise to minus 6, we, we have to choose n to be about 200. Now, here because our error is less than or equal to constant times h cube, definitely the constant here and the constant in piecewise linear, these two constants they are different. For piecewise linear approximation, the constant was depending on the second derivative. Now, here it is depending on third derivative. So, here for piecewise quadratic, the convergence is proved under the condition that f is 3 times differentiable. So, now we have constant times h cube and then we hope that the accuracy 10 raise to minus 6 should be achieved for a smaller value of n, because h cube converges faster to 0 than h square and this turns out to be the case. And when you do a bit of computation, we had calculated up to f double dash. Now, you have to calculate f triple dash. 
So, that is going to be 3 by 8 x raise to 5 by 2. Once again 1 upon x raise to 5 by 2 is a decreasing function on closed interval 1 to 2 and hence the maximum will be attained at the left hand point which is 1 and hence norm of f triple dash infinity is equal to 3 by 8. Then we get norm of f minus g n infinity which is less than or equal to a constant into 1 by n cube. So, this upper bound will be less than 10 raise to minus 6 provided n cube is bigger than 10 raise to 6 divided by 192 into root 3. So, in this case n is equal to 20 will work. The values of n is equal to 200 and n is equal to 20 these are rough estimates. You can try to find the better estimate. So far we had considered piecewise interpolation where you were interpolating the function. Now we are going to consider a piecewise cubic polynomial which interpolates function values and the derivative values at the partition points. So, here the interpolation which we are going to explain it can be done provided your derivative values of the function they are also available. This may not be always the case if only function values are available then we cannot do this piecewise cubic Hermite interpolation. Now, the method or the methodology is the same consider the cubic Hermite interpolation and then do that for each sub interval. We have already seen cubic polynomial interpolation which interpolates the given function at two end points a and b and its derivative values at a and b. In order to determine a cubic polynomial since there are four coefficients to be determined we need four interpolation conditions. These four interpolation conditions can be either four distinct interpolation points or four points which are which can be repeated. So, we are repeating the left hand point a twice and right hand point b twice. In this case we had seen that the error involves the divided difference based on a repeated twice, b repeated twice x and multiplied by function w x which is x minus a into x minus b whole square. Already we had seen that maximum of modulus of x minus a x minus b it is attained at the midpoint a plus b by 2. So, for the square x minus a square x minus b square again the maximum is going to be attained at a plus b by 2 and that gives us a upper bound for the cubic Hermite interpolation. This result for a single cubic Hermite interpolation we will apply for each interval and then, uh, then obtain a piecewise cubic function which is not only continuous, but it is differentiable. If we had decided to choose four distinct points in each interval like for linear we had chosen two points to be end points, for quadratic we had chosen three points which involved two end points and the midpoint. So, similarly for the piecewise cubic 
interpolation, we could have chosen two end points and two other points in the interior of the interval. So, we get four distinct points. If you do that, then because we are choosing the interpolation points, our interpolation points include the partition points, the function will be continuous. But then for the cubic Hermite interpolation, by very fact that you are interpolating the given function and its derivative at the two end points, our function is going to be continuously differentiable function. So, you get continuously differentiable function, you are going to get the error to be less than or equal to constant times h raise to 4. The drawback is you may not know the derivative values at the points T i. So, what one will like to have is have a piecewise cubic polynomial. Then because it is cubic, I can ask for overall continuity to be C 2 continuity. That means, the function is continuous, the derivative is continuous and second derivative is continuous. So, still I retain the piecewise structure and then we will also like to have the order of convergence to be h raise to 4. So, that is the cubic spline interpolation. So, we will be considering that and so far for the we could write down explicit formula for the polynomials in, in terms of the function values. For cubic spline, we will have to solve a system of equations. So, piecewise cubic Hermite interpolation and cubic spline interpolation is going to be the topic of our next lecture. Thank you.